Want to know what the top seven mistakes that buyers are making right here in Ottawa when they buy a property? Well, I'm going to unpack that in this video and I'm going to have a solution for each of these seven mistakes so you can make sure you don't make them. LiamSwords.com if we haven't met before, my name is Liam Swords. I've sold over a thousand homes since being a licensed realtor in 2002. So let's hop right into the content. Today we're talking about the seven top mistakes that home buyers are making when they buy property right here in Ottawa. Number one is they don't have a final walkthrough in their deal. And what that means is when they put their agreement of purchase of sale together, they do not have a condition allowing the buyer to walk through the day before closing to make sure the property is as they expect it. Why is this important? Well, you never know how a property is actually going to be left. I had a scenario not too long ago where this property that I sold just off Preston Street in Little Italy was full of stuff during the showings and we were reassured by the listing agent and by the seller that everything would be removed. We went through and sure enough, full of stuff. Like, I mean, I don't think they moved anything. So the solution to all this is make sure that you have a term in your offer for a final walkthrough that the property is left in an empty broom clean condition. And if it's not, it gives you the opportunity to hold back some of the money to make sure you're not stuck having to vacate and empty out the property. See, when property closes and money's exchanged from your bank to their lawyer and the keys are exchanged, you have no leverage. So the only way you're going to get the seller to remove the stuff after it's done is likely going to small claims court, which is just going to get roped up in time waiting and additional costs for you. So avoid all this. Make sure you have a term in the offer that allows for a final walkthrough. Number two, not knowing the traffic pattern. So what I mean by this is, you know, when we're out showing property and buyers are getting excited in the home, they're like falling in love with the house. They can see the home, you know, the bedrooms where the kids are going to be, the backyard, maybe where the hot tub's going to go, all of these things. But are they really looking at the flow of traffic? Some examples are, are they aware of where the schools are and what impact that will have in the morning and in the evening with parents dropping off their kids, and a lot of bus traffic going by. Know where you stand. Like as an example, where I live, I'm in Westboro and we bought a property a couple blocks away from a school and we weren't really overly concerned about that. We knew there would be traffic, but now that we're living in the house for four or five years now, it's quite a steady stream of traffic that goes by our door. We would not have known about that if we didn't take the time and really kind of do a string line around the property, identify where these schools are, and then understand that there's obviously gonna be more flow of traffic. Another example, we have the Ottawa Senators National Hockey League team that plays out in Canada at the Canadian Tire Center. That's just off Highway 417 heading west. That will have an impact on anyone traveling west from like Bayshore on, like 416 on, there's gonna be an impact there with a slowdown of traffic, likely 70 events, 365 days a year. You can do the math. It is going to impact your commute if you're in the West End. That's not to say that Canada, Stidsville, Bells Corners, these areas aren't attractive. They are. It's just take that into consideration when you're making your decision. So the solution on this, get excited about the property. That's important. Fall in love with the property, but do further due diligence of what the local schools, fire stations, as an example, you know, you don't want to be close to a fire station or not be aware of the fire station. You move in and all you hear is sirens all the time. Make sure you know where the fire stations are and be aware of the traffic heading on the west end of the city. The third mistake I see buyers making all the time when buying right here in Ottawa is the accessibility and the mistake they make in terms of how difficult it is to get to amenities. And what do I mean by that? Well, we have a lot of communities that are new and, and being built up, and these are massive subdivisions. Barhaven, Riverside South, Orleans, Canada, Stittsville. And these developers have bought hundreds of acres, and they just keep 
adding property after property, location, street, all of that. There's parks, there's schools, all of that really nice family friendly amenities you need. But we also have to think about well, where's the local grocery store? How close is the pharmacy? What about the hospitals? A mistake I see all the time is buyers get so fixated on the property and the house and the location and the streets and they don't think enough about how long does it actually take me to get to Walmart or Loblaws or Sobeys or Farm Boy. Some neighborhoods, you can be like 15, 17 minutes. You can be like 25 speed bumps. You can be like three or four roundabouts. Not the end of the world, but I do hear from time and time again when working with sellers who bought the property and we talk about like, what do you love about the house? If you could change one thing, what would it be? And consistently I hear, you know what Liam? When I bought the property, I never really considered the distance it was to some of these amenities and grocery stores and pharmacies and coffee shops and stuff like that. So a solution on that is be aware of the location where the property is in relation to the retail shops, the amenities, the pharmacies, the hospitals, all these things that you will need. The fourth mistake I see buyers making all the time right here in Ottawa is they jump too quick in making a decision. And more specifically around what is the neighborhood like? How safe is it? Like Ottawa holistically is a very safe town. Yes, there are pockets that tend to be a little rougher, but as a whole, Ottawa is quite safe. But what does it mean specifically for that property in that exact location? What are the parks like? What's happening at night when it gets dark? Are kids on the streets? Are kids in small groups selling drugs? Are kids in the playground? Are they swinging on the swings? Are they making sandcastles? What's that really like? So the mistake I see is buyers is jumping so quickly. They go in, they see the house, they love it. They just wanna move forward on it. They can see the family dinners, the love, the laughter, and that is all important, 100%. But you gotta take yourself out a little bit and say, is this the right location for us right now? My best advice on this and the solution to overcome this mistake of jumping too quick is the rule of three. Let me unpack this for you. So the rule of three is three different events. Number one, you see the property, you look at it, it checks all the boxes, you're like, yep, this is probably the one. Then you have a cooling off period. You get back into it for a second time. That's number two. At least 24 hours later, when you've had a fresh sleep, you've had time to think about it, the honeymoon phase is still kind of there about the property, but it gives you a fresh new perspective. You go through it again. The third and final of the rule of three is you go back a third time, you park the car and you independently walk the streets at different times. And you see what's happening at night. You see, are the parks busy? What's happening? What's the activity in the park? Are cars driving fast? Are there horns honking? Are there fire stations around? Stuff like that. That's my solution, the rule of three. Get in once, get in 24 hours, after or more and do the drive-by park and walk the streets. The fifth mistake I see buyers in Ottawa making is they are not aware of the vacant unit tax. So back in 2022, there was a vacant unit tax that got rolled out right here in Ottawa and it was applied to your 2023 property tax bill. And what that says, if the property has been vacant for six months or longer, there is a 1% vacant unit tax applied to that property. So the quick math on that is $750,000 house, the tax, the penalty, that is $7,500 that is tacked on to your property tax bill because the property was vacant. So a mistake I see is buyers are not preparing in their offer to make sure that the seller has declared that and that if there's any expense, i.e. if the property was vacant for six months, then that is on the responsibility of the seller, not of the buyer. Because folks, once the property changes hands, it is your responsibility. You own that, it goes with the property. So how we overcome that is we're quite aware when we're going through the properties. What are the closets like? Are they full of clothes? A good one is checking the fridge. You open up the fridge, if there's food in there, okay, likely someone's living there. But it could also be vacant for a while and someone just moved in for a month. So that six month vacancy could have happened before someone just moved in. So the solution on this and to overcome this vacant unit tax mistake that some buyers make is put in your offer a declaration that the seller will share with you before date set for title that the property does not have a vacant unit tax application on it. 
meaning that the property has not been vacant for six months or more. Better yet, put in your offer that if it is, it is the responsibility of the seller to clear that charge before closing. The sixth mistake I see buyers making all the time is assuming the DIY special and just moving forward with it and being impressed with the way the property looks, but knowing that there's maybe a few little corners that were cut, but not asking the appropriate questions. Are there permits? How's the electrical done? Was there an ESA report? ESA stands for Electrical Safety Authority Report. This is the governing body right here in the province of Ontario that comes around and checks the electrical to make sure it's set up. This is huge because I've heard of cases before where property has sold, buyers have a mortgage, and you need insurance, home insurance, before the mortgage will be released. Home insurance won't give a policy, an insurance policy to the buyers because they don't have the electrical up to code. So the whole deal just gets put on ice. There's financial implications because you can't close, you have to have an electrician in, then you have to have the ESA, then you have to have an electrical safety authority report done. All of this is quite dangerous. So the best advice, whenever you're going through a property and you wanna move forward on it, have in your offer that the seller agrees to disclose and share all contents of renovations that were done, including permits and electrical safety authority general inspection within 48 hours after acceptance. It's a perfect solution, it protects you, and then you can move forward. You don't need to worry about anything after that. And finishing it off at number seven, a mistake I see happening all the time, is buyers are relying solely on a standard home inspection to make their final decision on the property. Now, home inspections, 100%, I fully support and encourage all buyers to put that in. But what I mean by only relying on that solely is there are pockets of Ottawa that have extraordinary circumstances with like either deficiencies or things to be aware of. An example, in the Glebe, the Glebe is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Ottawa and they have known foundation issues. So what's important to know, is the foundation in a state that is solid or is it starting to disintegrate? Sometimes home inspectors will look at it and if the, all of the walls are closed in in the basement, they can't tell. They're gonna check with their moisture detector, probably no moisture, it's fine. They're gonna check with their infrared light to see if there's any escape or heat loss. But how can they actually tell about the foundation? So a tip on that, make sure if you're buying in the Glebe or in some of these older neighborhoods that you're looking at the foundation because that can get missed a lot of times with the home inspection. Now, the solution on this is just being super aware, asking the appropriate questions during your showings and in your offer process and doing a ton of due diligence online, sifting through different forms and that. This is a little bit more tricky to really narrow down on that. And one of the reasons why it's important to have experience when you're buying property to make sure that you're not missing out. Well, folks, that wraps up my seven most common mistakes that I'm seeing buyers make right here in Ottawa. I hope you found this helpful and certainly love to hear your comments below. Thanks, and we'll catch you on the next video.